Welcome to Tech Garage, presented by rockauto.com. Well, I got the Infinity in the shop, and I pride myself out of the driver's seat. And Brian, I'm glad you didn't have to witness that, because it would have took the whole show. It looked like a sloth climbing out of a tree, man. We need some help with that seat. Yeah, I'll tell you what, it's not as exciting as, of a job as bolting on a bunch of horsepower or performance, but you've got to have the seat in the right location. Doesn't matter what you're driving. If you want to be safe and drive well in all conditions, you got to have your feet and your hands and your body in the right position. And clearly, we've got a problem here. You know what? And I brought my voltmeter over. I was ready to go, but I got to thinking on the way over. It moves some. It's shifting. And, you know, we always use strategy-based diagnosis here on Tech Garage, and it's a good method. I mean, think about it. If the passenger seat's working and the driver's seat's not working, it's probably not a fuse because they're fused up together. You'd have to look in the schematic and find out. But ours, it's moving. Brian, I mean, I just don't know what's wrong with it, well, but let's you can just, give it a try. Let's verify what you experienced. So it looks like the lumbar's going backwards and forward just fine. That looks to be okay, right? But if we try to slide it like you did, I mean, there's a crazy twist going on here. No way that's going to work. The crazy twist so, is a great word. Yeah. I mean, the crazy twist kind of gives us that strategy-based diagnosis to where it's moving. I mean, it's moving back and forth. We probably have a mechanical issue, a motor gearing issue, but yeah. probably not an electrical issue. Now, Brian, I think it's best we just pull the seat out. Number one, we can see what's going on. Number two, our viewers can see it as well. While you're doing that, though, I'm going to set up a really cool demo so we can see all the motors, amp draw, just in case something gets stuck in the seat. Everybody will understand what's going on. Yeah. Perfect. Let me get this guy out of here. So with just about any seat configuration, there's usually four mounting bolts. I'm going to get these front ones broken loose and out. Now, when you're dealing, in, especially in a nice car like this one, you know, you don't want to do any damage to the interior when we pull this big beastie seat out. That steel frame rail could scratch things up. So get yourself a cover, get the steering column up and out of the way. Give yourself every chance you can to have space. Let me get these fronts out. So once we get the front ones out, I'll move to the back. Now, this is one of those jobs that's not super exciting, but there's a real high potential ROI here. This seat, new, the whole sub framework and the new motors and everything starts at $800. So this is worth our time and effort to see if we can repair it. And if it's a mechanical issue, it's going to be far less than that to actually repair. So I'm going to move to the back. Those are going to be tough. One flat at a time, old school with a box end wrench. I'll get this tipped up, get everything labeled. But John's going to show you how this whole complex system really works. Brian's right, it is a complex system, but I think we can simplify it for you. Here it is on the schematic here, and we'll just find the reclining motor. It goes down with a pink wire and comes up the green. It's a bi-directional motor. Put power down one side, ground the other, it goes in one direction, switch it, it goes in the other. And I can show it to you right here on this actual simple motor. Here's a motor right here. I got positive and negative, watch this. So if I hit this to the positive and I hit it to the negative, it's going in that direction, it's going around. You saw it spin. Now if I reverse the leads, what's gonna happen? it's going in the other direction. That's how the seat motor works, when you go forward or you go back, and you can see it in action right here. If I'm going back, I'm going forward, it's just changing that direction in the motor. Now this one can tilt up, it can tilt down, so which is really cool. But when you're dealing with a lot of kids like I am, two kids and a wife, you might get some stuff. You're just wondering why the brush and M&Ms and the headphones are sitting there? Well, I'll show you why, because stuff's gonna get caught up in the tracks, it's just normal. If it gets caught up in the tracks, you start to get an amp draw. And what an amp draw is, is too much current. Current causes heat, and that's what blows your fuse or your circuit breaker, and then you wonder why you have a problem. So watch this, is pretty cool. So if I run this thing back and forth, you can see we're dealing with you know about three to five amps as it goes in both directions. That's normal amp draw, but if I wedge this brush in there and I start running it back, it gets caught up in there. Look at the amps. Oh man, 12, 14, 15, eventually I'm gonna burn this wire harness, I'm gonna blow a fuse, or I'm gonna blow a circuit breaker, one or the other, but you wanna keep those tracks clean. Now, if you suspect it's a motor, I actually have a motor hooked up right here to a DVOM, and I switched it over to volts. This is pretty easy, you can do this as well. The motor's not working, but I have to make sure I have power there. So I said it was a bi-directional motor, check this out. If I go up, it's 12 volts, if I go down, 12 volts. The key is though, check out up, negative 12 volts, down, positive 12 volts. Negative 12 volts, positive 12 volts. What that tells me is I have power to the motor, my motor must be bad. If I didn't, I just wanna go up, strategy-based diagnosis to the switch and check it out and see what's going on. We suspect ours is a mechanical problem, but we're gonna find out in a minute because Brian's about ready to pull the seat out.
Okay, everything's loose. I just got done labeling all the connectors and their mounts. Now I'm going to tip this seat back and use one of our more high-tech tools, the cell phone. And I'm going to take a picture here of this wiring scheme just so I have some type of reference document. I've got the schematic online. This is just kind of quicker and easier to do. Now, with this up, you can see that with the Sharpie, I actually labeled one, two, three, four. These are both kind of animal plug connectors. They come out one at a time, but I just like to have that reference. So let me get this master disconnected, these all disconnected. Now, I'm gonna work these out. You can see, come out here first. I put a one here on the end, only goes one way, lines up with one, three, and three, so we're good. So this is a point where you probably need a buddy. In our case, Chief Tech Chase is gonna join me here and help get this beastie seat up out. Again, we don't wanna damage anything, so we're gonna be slow and methodical and get this over to the bench for a proper diagnosis. Thank you, Chase. A big old seat here. Now, sure Ryan, is. when you fix this now, don't put it in your house. Yeah, put it back <laughs> you got in that the right. Car. You got I'll that take right. it out okay. this side. Oh, I like coming okay. out Okay, yep, got this side. I'll come around there to you. Okay, yep, appreciate it. Support that top. I got it. All right, off to the bench. Hey, stay with us on Tech Garage, presented by rockauto.com.